Hi! Today's yoga class is going to be a shorter version of the Ashtanga primary series. I've done Ashtanga quite a few times and generally I always do a different focus because it's difficult to do the whole, all the poses, the whole primary series in an hour, hour and a half when it's led. Also, there's a couple of poses in there that are really tricky that I'm not great at myself. So um, I'm still working on that. Yoga is progress. Um, today, I want to focus on quite an integral part of Ashtanga yoga, which we haven't focused on yet, which is Ujjayi breath, victorious breath or oceanic ocean breath. So it's a, it's a specific pranayama where we breathe so that we you can hear it audibly, sort of constrict your, the back of your throat a little bit. That um, you're trying to do that throughout the whole practice. I will explain that in more detail at the beginning of the class, so no need to go deep now. Let's just so you know what's coming. Prop-wise, I'm not at home today and don't have my yoga block or my yoga belt with me. So instead of a yoga belt, I'm using the belt of a bathrobe, which is perfect. You could also use a scarf or a towel or a t-shirt, but scarf or a yoga belt, a belt of bathrobe are ideal um, replacements. And I don't have my yoga block, so I'm using a really nice thick book. And um, as always, if you have any pain, please come out of the pose. Do not do anything that causes you pain. If you do not like a pose, you don't have to do it. In both situations, you can wait for us in child's pose, you can just stand in the pose that we we're doing before um, and you could also you could also just come to standing um, and yeah that's pretty much it have fun I hope you enjoy this and I hope you enjoy the pranayama the ujjayi breath see you later um, and yeah today I want to do um, an ashtanga set for class again we haven't done that in a little while and um, I want today, so obviously we're trying to focus on different parts of the Ashtanga sequence whenever we do it, but today I want to do a focus on the Ujjayi breath. I think we might have touched on that before, but um, yes, yeah, so Ujjayi breath is a, it's a pranayama, a breathing exercise that you can do away from the Ashtanga um, yoga practice but it's a really integral part of it. And um, in contrast to other um, pranayamas or breathing, breathing practices that we do at the beginning of the class or at the end of the class for a couple of breaths while sitting or lying down, what you do with ujjayi breath, you do that throughout the class as you move. So um, as you move through your practice, so you do that whilst moving. And um, what, that does is it almost like it it helps you focus more on the breath and therefore has it's sort of that moving meditation part that yoga can be is increased and I don't do it all the time um, and I sometimes forget and that's all totally fine obviously but when I do um, actually stick with that way of breathing I really notice how that impacts my um, my yoga my yoga practice my Ashtanga practice. Like I feel much more I don't know focused and yeah, it's just it sort of flows by your mind. So it's really com it focused on something really concentrated on the practice, less distraction and it's just I think it's a really fun part of this practice. So Ujjayi breath. It's most commonly translated with victorious breath, which is quite nice. Um, but it's also called oceanic or ocean breath. And that's because of the sound that it makes. So I'm going to come a bit closer actually for this so we can, you can hear me and I can see, you can see what I do. So, okay. So for Ujjayi, um, you want to make a sound in your throat that sounds like, so you're mostly constricting your throat a little bit in the back here. Um, and it makes sort of a ocean sound, a bit of a hissing sound. So come a bit closer. <laughs> so it goes a bit like this. I hope you can hear that. And a really good way of 
practicing this is imagine that you're fogging up a mirror. So put your hand in front of your face and imagine that's a mirror and with your mouth open to begin with, we're going to imagine you're fogging it up. So just nice. And now next time you do it, try halfway through that out breath to close, close your mouth and keep that sound in the back of your throat going. So it goes more into like, a, and try to do that as you move through your practice. And I personally, <laughs> It's a lot easier when you start doing that on the exhale. On the inhale, doing that sound, it's really odd. So you can maybe try if you want. So try it on the, again, like with the open mouth and closing halfway through. So we go, and then on the inhale, hold on. It's a lot, it's, it, it takes, yeah, you have to do more thinking. So let's try that together. So do that out breath close halfway through and then see if you can do it on the inhale so great and um also one of my um yoga teachers the one i sort of started doing ashtanga with she says that is her thing that's quite nice it's totally fine if you sort of make like really funny noises in between as she's sort of going through your practice and go like <laughs> <laughs> it's okay that's that's bound to happen and I guess especially now we're all at home no one can hear you it's fine um and that's just that's just part of it it see if you if you like it and also totally fine if you get to do it at some point I'll give you cues to sort of um try to come back to it especially in down dog it's or when we're staying in a pose it's easy to um stick with it or to sort of get back into it rather than when you're moving um ujjayi breath creates heat in the body as well that's what they're saying by um in yoga by i guess by making that a little um tighter in the throat you create more heat so maybe um you'll notice that you'll sweat a little more by doing that i have definitely noticed that when i've been doing that throughout the whole practice um and yeah, yeah you see how it feels if you don't like it you don't have to do it obviously but yeah just give it a go and it's a really it's quite it's a, and with pranayama and breathing exercises when you there's this thing in yoga called the eight limbs limbs of yoga which are the different parts that are yoga and in the west we think of yoga as just the poses just the movement but there is a lot of um personal conduct like how you're supposed to behave in the world meditation is one of the limbs but breathing practices pranayama is also a part of those eight things that make up what is yoga and breathing is one part movement is another part they're equal parts in the eight parts so by doing that both at the same time it's it's a really nice way of sort of experiencing more of what makes yoga yoga than just the body movements but if you're not up if you don't want to do it totally fine it's your practice okay so let's get going i'll put you back to where you were there we go put my computer in as well Ooh, okay and as um generally with ashtanga Yeah, so as generally with Ashtanga, we're starting from standing right with our um, sound salutations. So we're warming up during the movement. And I'll sort of keep an eye on the time so that it doesn't become too long of a session. Um, and I'll see how many poses we'll do. But let's come into our Tadasana. So our feet are together, maybe, or hip width apart if you prefer. Let's lift our toes off the mat, spreading them wide lowering them one at a time if you want maybe lifting the heels nice firm grounding here engaging our perineum pelvic floor our abdomen rolling that's also part of ashtanga this engaging the the core those are the bandhas the locks in the body so engaging those rolling our shoulders up back and down it can go into the bandhas another time a bit more palms facing forward we're looking in front of us, 
chin slightly tucked, but still as if someone's pulling us by the top of the head. And let's try our Ujjayi breath for a moment here. So closing our mouth and trying to imagine that we're fogging up that imaginary mirror in front of us. If you want, you can try again by starting with mouth open and closing it halfway through. So, okay. Creating that sound as if you're by the ocean, that sound of the shore or the wind. Okay, and now try to remain that breath, stay with that breath if you want, and inhale our arms up. Exhale, come down. Hands, as I said, feet maybe bending the knees. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, We're stepping back with the right foot. Followed by the left foot into a plank. Nice firm plank. Heels are pulling back. Shoulders pulling apart. Inhale and exhale. Coming down knees. Chest to chin. Inhale. Coming into cobra. Exhale. Pushing into downward dog. And here in your downward dog, maybe bending one knee, trying to bring the other heel closer to the ground. So you can stretch out the other foot behind you. Waking up those calves. I quite like doing that in the first down dog when I start a nice chamber practice like this. Then the other foot, bring quite slowly, but also bend the knee of the foot that's sort of reaching back and just tuck it in, pushing into the hands, waking up those calves. Other side. Now coming to stillness, and we're staying here for another two or three breaths and see if you can connect to your Ujjayi breath. The next inhale, we're stepping our right foot in between our hands, followed by the left foot. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to shins. Exhale, full forward fold, hands either side of the feet, maybe bending the knees. Inhale, we're engaging our core. We're coming up flat back, nice. Exhale, hands into heart center. And again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, we'll fold down. <laughs> inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, hands down, stepping back with the left foot this time, followed by the right foot. Plank again, engaging our core here. Inhale, exhale, coming down knees, chest, chin. Inhale, sliding forward, cobra. Exhale, pushing back into a downward dog. You can walk your feet again here if you want. I tend to warm up my calves like this by bending one knee, straightening the other. In the first two, three sun citations, and then gets a lot easier. Also helps with the forward folds that are going to happen. Two more breaths here, maybe with your dry breath. Inhale, stepping the left foot in between the hands, followed by the right foot. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, engaging the core, we're coming up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Lovely guys. Okay, now um, you can try if you want to jump back instead of stepping back, or you can continue stepping back. We're doing three more of our sound citation A, Surya Nasmata Namaskar A. And you can also try to do um, jump back and then chaturanga and upward facing dog or stick with stepping back, knees, chest, chin, cobra. Okay, standing here. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, engage in the core coming down. Inhale, if you're warm enough, fingertips to ground or hands to shins. Exhale, hands on the floor. And if you want to jump back, bending our feet, looking in front of us, and stepping back into jumping back into an A plank. If you want to try chaturanga, walk forward on your toes a little bit. 
and then bending your elbows on the exhale. Inhale, upward dog, this rolling of our toes and only the back of our feet and our hands are on the ground. And then you would roll over your feet for a down dog or just stick with what we did before. Down dog, we're staying for a few breaths and maybe trying to do our Ujjayi breath. Down dog, pressing the whole of your weight, not just into the ball of your hand, your wrist, but the whole hand, shoulder blades, going slightly apart, shoulders away from the ears. Back flat, if you have to or want to, bend your knees a little for that. Aim probably to pull your heels towards the ground just to wake up your calves. And look towards the space between your big toes. Two more breaths. And now you can either step forward one foot at a time or bending your knees, looking to the space between your thumbs or just ahead and trying to jump forward. If by jumping forward you sort of land halfway, then you can just walk forward. Inhale, half forward, forward. Exhale, full forward, fold. Maybe the legs are getting a little straighter. Inhale, engage in the core, we're coming up. Exhale, hands in the sun center, lovely. We're doing two more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, half forward, forward. Exhale, hands down, maybe jumping back into plank. Exhale, we're coming down, chaturanga on this chest chin. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. And exhale, downward dog. Neither of the options, chaturanga versus knees, chest, chin, upward dog versus cobra, is better or worse. It's just a different way of moving. Staying here for a few breaths. Maybe trying to do a ujjayi breath again. Maybe just for one breath, find it difficult. And wait, bending our knees if we want to jump forward, and we're jumping forward and exhale, or we're stepping forward. Inhale, half forward, forward, fingertips and up, or hands to shins. Exhale, full forward, forward. Inhale, engaging the core and we're coming up. Really nice, guys. The hands and calf center. Inhale, arms up. Last one. Exhale, we're folding down. Inhale, half forward, forward. Exhale, stepping or jumping into a plank. Inhale, and exhale, coming down knees, chest, chin, or full, full, uh, or chaturanga. And inhale, cobra, bhujangasana, or upward dog, ardha mukhasana. And I'm coming into a downward dog, ardha mukhasana. And breathing in. Maybe our Ujjayi breath. It's okay to forget. I've just forgotten. And now either stepping or jumping forward. Inhale, half forward, forward. Fingertips to mat, hands to shins. Exhale, full forward, forward. Inhale, engaging the core and coming up. Exhale, hands into heart center. Really great. Cool. Um, now we're going to do three sun salutations B, Surya Namaskar B. So for that, we're going to, uh, the, those poses include, or those sun salutations include warrior one. So, and they also include chair pose at the beginning. Can't forget that. 
We're going to stand at the front of our mat again, nice firm rounding of the feet, maybe lifting the toes if we want to. Stand here, let's inhale, arms up. Exhale, let's pull our hands into our chest. And now let's sit on that imaginary chair. Utkatasana. Bum goes back, knees together, knees pushing against each other. And as you look down at your knees, you want to be able to see your big toes. If your knees are too far forward, then you just come back a little bit. And inhale, arms go beside the ears. Um, if you find that uncomfortable, you could just have your um, hands and heart center. And here you want to have a nice flat back. So not that bum, duck back where the bum is really pushing out and you're sort of arching your spine, that nice flat back. So that means that you have to come a bit further out. That's totally fine. Okay, so inhale here and exhale. We're coming into a forward fold from chair. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, hands down. We're either stepping or jumping back into a plank. Inhale. Exhale, we're coming down this chest chin or chaturanga. Inhale, coming into an upward dog. Exhale, rolling into downward dog. And here we're going to place the sole of our left foot down, toes pointing a tiny bit to, pointing towards the corner, the left corner of your mat. And we're stepping forward with the right foot in between our hands. And here, what I quite like to do with the first round of these, so I like to stay in this low lunge, but with the sole of the back foot down for a breath or two, just to um, align my hips, get my hips used to this pose. Stay for another two breaths, maybe a jai breath if you want. And with the next inhale, we're going to bring our arms up. We're coming into a warrior one. And for warrior one, our hips and our shoulders, we're trying to square them to the front. I'll show you here. So bring the back foot down, bending that front knee. We try to pull that back hip a bit forward. So we're not flat here, like in warrior two, but we're trying to face the front of our mat. That can be a bit difficult. If you're finding it really difficult, you could come onto the ball of your back foot into more of a high lunge, and there it is much easier to square your hips to the front, which is totally fine. And if you're finding it, if you take some of the bend out of your front knee, it may get a little easier to square your hips here. Arms up. So for one more breath, now that we've settled, inhale and exhale, hands down either side of the front foot, and we're stepping back into a plank. Inhale and exhale, we're coming down knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, we're sliding forward, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, we're coming into our downward dog. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. So now placing the sole of the right foot down, right toes pointing to the right top corner of the mat and stepping forward. And we're staying here for a moment and you can already try Aligning your hips, point like squaring your hips, having both hip bones point or in line with that front short edge of your mat here. Your hands are just on the floor for a little bit of help with balance. The weight of your body is in your legs. One more breath here. And with the inhale, we're coming up. And again, as you come up, try to pull that back hip that right hip here forward and the front hip, the left hip back and your hip chest, um, your shoulders as well. Have a look at your chest and see if it's very um, at an angle to the front edge of the mat or if it's relatively parallel. This, I mean, that doesn't sound super parallel. It's not exactly the same, but that's the aim. We, we, we're bodies, not your geometrical figures, so we probably are never going to be exactly square, obviously, but that's just the picture in your mind. And let's raise our arms for one breath, now that we're set up in our hips. You can look to your fingers if you want. Inhale and exhale, we're folding down, hands either side of the front foot, stepping back into a plank. Inhale and exhale, we're coming down, knees chest, chin, or chaturanga. 
Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. If at any point you want to take a break in child's pose, you're very welcome to do so. And maybe coming back to our dry breath whilst we're in this pose for a few breaths. The next breath, we're going to either step our um, feet in front or jump. Inhale, half forward fold, fingertips to mat. Exhale, full forward fold. And from our full forward fold, we're bending our knees. Inhale, we're coming right away into a chair. You might lose your balance, that is fun. As you've just seen, I lose my balance. And straightening our legs. I'm going to do two more of those. And as you move through these sound citations, you can do, um, you can chop and change. You can step one time, you can jump one time, you can do chaturanga, manga, and then um, knees, chest, chin. It's totally up to you. You don't have to do the same thing every time. Okay, so inhale, let's come into our chair. Inhaling our arms up. And exhale, we're folding directly into our forward fold, into our class, our forward fold, fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, hands down, stepping or jumping into a plank. Inhale in the plank and exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, we're sliding forward, cobra, bhujangasana, or upward facing dog, baddha mukhanasana. We're pushing back into our down dog. Bring the sole of our left foot down again, stepping forward with our right. Inhale, exhale here in the slam chamber, coming up, inhale into our upward facing dog. Look to the thumbs if that's okay on your neck. Inhale, exhale, folding down, stepping back. Inhale, exhale, coming down, chaturanga or ease just chin. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Facing arm, right foot down, stepping forward with the left foot in between the hands. And inhale, exhale here. Inhale, coming up. Really nice, guys. Inhale, and exhale, we're coming down. Stepping back. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Maybe stepping your feet in a little if that feels better. And we'll dry your breath if you want. Hearing that sound, that sound of the ocean maybe. Okay, next we are stepping or jumping forward. Inhale, half forward fold, hands to the shins, the fingertips to the mat. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, we're engaging the core and we're coming up. In chair. <laughs> Sorry, I, I forget that sometimes. Inhale, exhale. <laughs> that happens to me all the time when I do it myself, that all of a sudden I'm like, oh no, <laughs> forgot the chair. Okay. One more of these. Inhale, arms up, exhale, let's pull them into heart center and let's come into our chair. Inhale, arms up here or hands into heart center, what you prefer. And exhale, folding into our full forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, we're stepping or we're jumping into our plank. Inhale, exhale, coming down, preferred way. Inhale, coming into our back bend, which I've only want. Exhale, pushing back. Mother, warrior, one, with the right foot in front, left foot behind. Stepping forward, and then inhale, coming up. Exhale, folding down. Stepping back, inhale, and exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, we're coming into our back bend, rolling forward. 
Exhale, bring into a down dog. So the right foot down, stepping forward with the left foot. Exhale. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, falling down. Stepping back. Inhale. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, rolling back. Into our down dog. Five breaths here. So choose if you want to give Ujjayi a go. Okay, now you are stepping or jumping forward. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, full forward fold. And now at the end of the exhale, bending our knees. Inhale, coming into our chair. Exhale, coming to standing. Well done, guys. Okay, I think we're warm. <laughs> Maybe more warm because of the dry breath. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, next section of our uh, Ashtanga practice are the forward folds. So we're doing these again. And for these, um, we're um, going to bring our feet hip width apart. I'll show you a little bit from the side. Yeah, this is good. And we're going to bring our hands on our hips. Inhale, we're looking up. Exhale, we're folding down. We're coming, maybe bending your knees a little bit. And I want you to bring your abdomen and your chest in contact with your thighs. So really bending your knees a lot. First one, we're going to bring our peace fingers around your big toes. So the fingers go between the big toe and the second toe and the fingers are under the toe. The thumb is resting on top of that big toe. Inhaling here, let's look up. And exhale, we're trying to fold forward, trying to bring the crown of our head to point towards the floor. And as you fold, as you straighten your legs a little bit, Keep your chest and your belly in touch with your thighs. As soon as it lifts, just come back to a little bit before. By keeping that contact, you're protecting your lower back. Coming as straight as you want or can. And breathing here for another three. Maybe you'll dry breath. Okay, bending the knees again. And if you want, you can now try to bring the whole palm of your hand under your foot. So we're lifting the foot. I think it's better contrast if I'm on my mat. We're lifting, we start the contact of our belly and chest to our thigh. We're lifting the foot off the ground. We're bringing our hand under the foot so that the palm of the hand and the sole of the foot are touching. The back of the hand is on the mat. And maybe you can bring your hand so far under your foot that your toes are on a sort of touching your wrist. Or if that's too much, you can just bring your feet somewhere on your palm. Coming here. And again, we're looking to the ground. So straightening our back a little bit. And then exhale, the folding. And again, keeping your thigh and your torso in contact. And breathing here. In and up through the nose, whether Ujjayi or not, in and up through the nose. And next in, we're bending our knees, we're releasing our feet, hands from under our feet, straightening our legs. Exhale, hands to our hips. And inhale, we're coming up to standing, gently. Lovely, really great. So we're going to do a couple of the standing poses now. The Ashtanga practice sort of, sort of split in three parts. We've got the standing sequence, which we're obviously doing now, we're standing. Then you've got the seated sequence, which is relatively long. There's lots of poses. And then there's the finishing sequence, which is the back bends, shoulder stand, and headstand, if people want to do a headstand. So that we're still on the standing part of it. We stand at the front of our mat, and today, we're only going to do the non-twisted versions of the poses. So there's 
triangle pose, trikonasana, and then there's twisted triangle, but we're only going to do triangle. We're coming to the front of our mat. And we're stepping back with the left foot. So the right leg is in front of us. We're sort of stepping halfway back on our mat and the foot, the back foot, the left foot is again, the sole of the foot is on the floor. Um, and um, the toes are pointing to that top left corner of the mat. And here, I should show you this way. Here you want your body nice and flat. So not what we've just done with um, our warrior two, where we wanted our hips to point forward, but we want nice and flat body. Um, and if you have your block or your book ready, you can bring that next to your, or near your foot, so you can use that. We're going to raise our arms, inhale, exhale, someone's pulling us by that hand, and then we're coming down. And you can bring your hand on your shin, on your thigh, but also use that block, place that on the inside of your foot. Or you could also try to come down deeper and maybe in Ashtanga, they tend to try and loop the big toe with the peace fingers like we did in our, um, in our forward fold just now. They don't have to do that. Wherever we are, let's say for three more breaths, Maybe the dry breath. Inhale, we're looking to the right big toe, and exhale, we're coming up. And then step forward again, and then we're doing the same thing on the other side. And I was just thinking, if the dry breath, if you don't really hear the ocean in it. You could also imagine breathe as noisily as Darth Vader and Star Wars breathe. So that, that hopefully you're not scary. It's a nice breath. <laughs> okay, let's step back with the right foot now. And again, right foot at a bit of an angle, sole down, toes pointing to the front of the mat. Inhale, we're raising our arms. Exhale, someone is pulling us to the front towards the left foot, and then we're folding down. And here you can bring your hand again on your shin, on that flock or book that you've got to help you, or see if you can reach and loop your big toe. If you do that, try if you if, if you can reach, great. If you can't reach, also great. But try not to compromise the shape in your body. You want to be your shoulders on top of your on top of each other, the hips more or less on top of each other. Um, if the only way you can reach your toe is by sort of collapsing, then just don't do it. Staying here for another two breaths with a dry maybe. Okay, inhale, we're looking down, and exhale, we're coming up. Now stepping forward. Um, and we're moving to extended side stretch. So for that, we're going to step back, and it's going to be a much, much longer step back. Um, imagine raising your arms, or maybe imagine raising your arms, you can actually raise your arms, and just have a look at your feet, maybe being roughly under your hands. It doesn't have to be exactly, but that's round about how wide you want to step. You want to step as wide as your arms are when you spread them out. Again, back foot is now maybe more in line with the short edge of your mat, rather than pointing super forward. A little bit of a forward point is great, but it's fine. Fine with the short edge of your mat. Um, and I step back with the right, and I should have stepped back with the left. We're starting on the right, so the right leg is the one that we're bending. Sorry about that. So we're bending the right leg and you can bring your own forearm on the thigh, the right thigh, and rest it there. We're reaching over. Or if you wanted to, you could bring the hand on the ground. And um, I've realized that I've been putting my hand on the inside, on the instep of the foot. Whereas in Ashtanga, it's this, there is not, you can do yoga in very different ways. And some pract practices want your hand to be on the inside of the foot. Ashtanga really wants the hand to be on the outside. So by the little toe, 
but do it how it's comfortable to you. And we're staying here for another three breaths, maybe Ujjayi. Wherever you are, also great if your forearm is on your thigh. Okay, and inhale, we're coming up, we're stepping forward. Uh, we're stepping back now, this time with the right foot. So we're bending the left knee in, right foot more or less in line with the short edge of the mat, left foot pointing forward, and we're coming down here. Coming down either with resting our forearm on our thigh, reaching over, really extended side stretch, you're extending our side or bringing the hand down next to the foot. And if your hand is down next to the foot, there is no weight really in that hand. Your legs are holding you up. The hand is just there, connecting you to the ground, maybe helping you with balance. But it's not like there's a whole lot of weight there. Stay for another three breaths. Okay, and inhale, we're coming up, stepping forward. We are going to do two out of the four wide-legged forward folds. So for that, we're stepping out. And this step is probably somewhere between the length of how we just stepped for so relatively wide, more or less hands under, uh, feet under the hands where the hands are. Um, so nice and wide, toes are pointing forward or a little bit inward, but definitely not outward. This feet like this is for a goddess pose where we're opening our hips, but we're not doing this right now. Toes are pointing in, we wanna fold. You can also get your block and place that under you. Um, so you have that kind of sort of under your face in the middle. And we're going to inhale, hands on our hips. Bring your shoulder blades together. We're looking up, opening our chest by bringing our shoulder blades together. And exhale, we're folding. Nice flat back. And then we're going to bring our hands on the ground. We could bring your hands on your book or your block if you've got in front of you. Inhaling here, we're looking forward. And exhale, we're folding down. We want to bring the crown of our head to point towards the floor. And maybe one day, as we do this pose more and more, then we can get the head closer and closer to the floor and maybe touch the floor one day. That's fine if it doesn't. The hands and feet are um, sort of on the same line if you can get them. So that, um, if you imagine from the middle of your foot to the middle of the other foot, there is a line. Your hands are on that line. We're breathing here in and up through the nose. Inhale, we're pushing into our hands, coming onto our fingertips, we're looking forward. Exhale, hands on our hips. And inhale, we're coming up, flat back. Lovely, really nice control there. Great, we're doing one more. So for that, we're staying how we are. Inhale, we're bringing our um, shoulder blades together again, opening our chest, we're looking up. And exhale, we're folding here, so really similar. But now we're going to see if we can grab our big toes. And again, we're bringing those peace fingers around the toes. So the fingers are under the toe now. Thumb is resting on top of it. If you can't do that, you could grab your shins. If you can't do that, you could just do what we did before. Do the same one again with the block, maybe under you. If you want to try holding your toes. And to inhale, we're looking up again, nice flat back. And exhale, you can now use that by hold, holding your toes, by pulling on your toes. Again, trying to bring that crown of the head to shine, to point towards the floor. But by pulling on your toes, maybe you can fold a bit deeper. Maybe even touch the crown of your head to the floor, but no need for that. And we're breathing here. Inhale, we're looking up. 
flat back. Exhale, hands to the hips. Exhale, we're coming up. And then we're stepping forward. Really nice. Great. Um, we're now doing um, one more pose. It's um, a few more poses in the standing part. This pose is another one that I often forget when I do this myself. I don't know why. Um, and it's pyramid pose. Um, I think it's pulse which is enough. So for that, we can either grab our hand, uh, our hands behind our back. Maybe you can reach your elbows behind your backs as we, you'll see what we do with our feet in a moment. Or you could try to come into a reverse prayer. So I quite like to do that by bringing my hands between my shoulders or as far as I can. And then almost like walking, shimming my hands further as far as I can between my shoulder blades, obviously different for everyone. And then the, 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 the small finger side of my hands is touching. And then I roll my shoulders back. And by doing that, let's see that from the side, this movement, I can bring the ball of my hands to touch and maybe the palms of my hands are touching. Often, so we're falling forward in a moment. Often when I do that, I lose a bit of contact. So you have to stay mindful of this. Or I have to, but could. Okay, we're going to step so that the right leg is in front of us first. The so right leg is forward, the back foot is behind us. And here we're trying to have the back foot pointing as forward as we can, almost as forward as the other foot. And you can maybe walk that front foot, the right foot, to the side a little bit. You want there to be space between your feet. You're not standing on a tightrope, like a, um, I don't only know the German word, Zyotensa, a rope dancer. Um, but you're like trains, your feet are like train tracks. And by doing that, your hips are, and your shoulders are square to the front, much more easily than when you're on that tightrope. Bring your hands into prayer if they have not already. Inhale, we're looking up. And exhale, we're folding down, flat back, as flat as we can. And maybe, and you bring it as low as you can come down. Don't have to touch your head to your shin. One day, again, maybe as we do this more often, but you don't have to. We're staying here for a few breaths, in and out through the nose. And try to keep your, the palms of your hands in contact if you're doing reverse prayer. One more breath. And inhale, coming up gently, slowly, flat back. We're stepping forward with the left foot. Now we're stepping back with the right foot. Again, maybe shimming first, shimming your hands a little bit higher so it can get into that reverse prayer if that's gotten a bit loose. Again, your feet are on train tracks. Right toes are pointing as forward as you can get them if that's in your availability. And inhale, we're looking up. Exhale, we're folding down. Slowly, slowly, as much as is comfortable to your legs, to your back. Keeping a flat back. You don't want to round in your back. Don't try and get your forehead or whatever to the leg by rounding your back. Keeping the back flat. Inhale, we're coming up gently. Exhale, we're stepping forward with our right foot. We're releasing our hands, maybe shake them, move the wrists around a little bit. If we did that reverse prayer in particular, it's a pretty tough one. Maybe that's why I tend to forget, forget that pose. <laughs> okay, we're doing one of the two balances. And I think we'll do um, balance in half lotus or tree. So it's your choice. So I'll show you how to do both options and then you can decide what you want to do. So for half lotus, we're sort of raising our foot, we're bringing, so I'm standing on my left foot, bringing the right foot here in half lotus. Yes, like this. 
And you can either stand here. If you want, you can go behind your back with your, so my right foot, I'm holding the right foot and the left hand. My right arm, <laughs> right arm already working my balance goes behind and holds my right underarm or could hold somewhere in your back if you can't reach your arm. If you can reach the foot, you can hold here. If you wanted to try to fold down, fold down from here, holding the foot, but only hold, uh, fold if you're holding the foot. If you don't like this, if it doesn't work for your hip, then we're just coming into a tree. So you can do tree on your toes, against your calf, or against your thigh. Just stay here. Lovely balance. So that's your two choices for now. Okay, decide what you want to do. Um, we're standing on our left foot first. Let's spread the toes of our left foot nice and wide, drawing them one at a time, and lifting the left heel. Really good grounding here. And let's raise our right foot and place it wherever we want to place it. Maybe holding it in a half lotus. If you're holding it half lotus, try to point the knee down as much as possible. If you're here at the moment and the knee is quite high up, that's fine. You're working, you will be improving. But yeah, hold it wherever you can hold it. And find a spot on the floor or on the wall in front of you to focus on that isn't moving. So ideally not me on the screen because I will be wobbling. And maybe folding down if you want. Wherever we are, we're staying for three more breaths. Maybe you'll dry a breath. If you were falling down, bend your knee, bend the sending knee of the right leg, the left leg, and gently come up. And then let go of that right foot. Let's shake out that left foot. Ooh, I can feel that. My little trick, especially if you've got a mat that's a bit squishy, is either if it's really difficult to balance, you can come off the mat. But what I do at home is when I do the second foot, is I'll place that foot in the spot where, the, where I was standing, where it's already a bit compressed so that there's not so much give. It's just a little trick that I've been developing. Okay, so we're now balancing on the right foot. So we're raising the toes of the right foot, spreading them out, lifting the heel, placing the heel down. And now exhale. Now we're lifting the left foot up, maybe into half lotus, going around. Maybe we're holding either somewhere in the back of our leggings or in the back of our shorts or the right arm behind the back. Maybe you can hold the toes, the big toe side of the left foot. And again, if your leg is a bit up like this, that's okay, you're working towards it, but you want to try and have the, your, foot, uh, your knee point down. Just to show you from the side, at the same time as you, oh, oh geez. <laughs> at the same time as we're pointing our knee down, we're trying not to have that duck bun again. We're trying to be flat, as flat as we possibly can be in our body. Fold if you want. You don't have to, and it's safe, three more breaths. And if you want to, if you fall, if you are falling, bend the knees of your right leg, gently come up. If we're all standing, let go and come out. Okay. I shake out that right leg now. Lovely. Now we're doing the last sequence to come to the floor. And then we'll do a couple of poses on the floor and then we'll, and we'll be done. Um, we're coming to the front of our mat and we're doing one last um, sun salutation where we're adding warrior one and warrior two. And we're also doing um, chair and katasana. So we're standing up front of our mat, feet together or hip width apart. Inhale, exhale here and inhale, arms up. Maybe trying our ujjayi breath as we flow through. Exhale, folding down. We're getting warm up, maybe we'll straight hammer forward fold. 
Inhale, half forward fold, fingertips to mat, palms to shin. Exhale, hands down, maybe you're stepping, or we might even be jumping back. Inhale, exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, into cobra or upward dog. Exhale, we're pushing back into downward dog. And here, we're looking in between our hands, we're bending our hands, we're either stepping or jumping forward in between our hands already again. And here, we're coming into Utkatasana, chair directly. Looking at our knees, can we see our big toes? Feeling into our body, is my back flat? Looking to our hands maybe, if that's okay, for our neck. Staying here for five breaths. Maybe Ujjayi breath. Really nice. Inhale and exhale, we're folding down, hands either side of the feet and jumping back. Inhale, exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, pushing back. And here we're now stepping down, placing the sole of the left foot down to the ground, toes pointing to the left hand corner of the mat. We're stepping forward with the right, we're coming into inhale, warrior one again. Done these a few times now. In warrior one, maybe pulling one hip forward, other hip back, arms up, maybe looking towards the thumbs. There's a slight back bend here. Staying for another three breaths. Okay, from here, we're straightening that right leg. We're trying to keep our eyes on our hands if we have. We're turning, now you're not going to be seeing me for a moment, we're turning uh, around. Now the right toes are pointing forward, left foot is pointing forward as well. We're coming into warrior one on the left hand side, so the left leg is bent. Really nice. It's like a little dance routine, this part. Four more breaths. And we're opening our arms. Our chest is now parallel to the long edge of the mat. Our body is flat. We're in warrior two. Vajrasana two. Keep a bend in your front knee. Knees not falling in or out. If you want, you could walk your back foot, your right foot, back a little bit to have a longer stance here. Three more breaths. Okay, we're straightening the left leg, we're turning the left feet in, we're pointing the right foot, feet, feet, foot, foot toes forward, the right foot forward, we're bending the right leg, warrior two on the right side, looking towards the right middle finger, maybe you're feeling your arms complain a bit, muscles working, just by holding our arms up, we're working our arm muscles, shoulder muscles. Two more breaths. Inhale and exhale, hands either side of that right front foot. And stepping back with the right into plank. Inhale, exhale, coming down, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, rolling forward, cobra, or upward dog. So we're pushing into the down dog, and from here, we're going to come to seated. So you could either come onto your knees, push into a child's pose and come seated, or bring one leg forward and sort of coming to a gentle cross legged. Great. We're into the seated part of our sequence of our little practice. And look what's the time. Cool. Okay, we're going to do a few more poses here. Um, and we're going to start with. Dandasana, star or stick pose, I reckon. So that our legs are out in front of us. Toe, feet are flexed, pointing to the ceiling. Hands are either side of our hips, on the floor, and we're engaging our calves 
and legs so much as if we were standing or as if we were pushing our feet against a wall and pushing it, engaging them so much that maybe the heels lift off the mat a tiny bit. We're tucking our chin to our chest and we're breathing here for five. Maybe now we can do that dry breath again. And at the end of the exhale, we're lowering our heels to the ground. We're keeping the engagement in our legs. And now we're moving into our forward folds into Paschimottanasana. This is where a belt is a great option. So you can bring that belt around the balls of your feet, holding it in either hand, sitting up really nice and tall here. Inhale and exhale, we're falling down. You can walk your hands down your belt if you want. And keeping your chest open, so you're not rounding your back, you're keeping your chest nice and open. If you don't have a belt or don't wish or need to use it, hold your calves, your ankles, maybe your feet. If you're holding your feet in this first one, we are having the fingers around the back of this or against the sole of our foot and the thumb on the top of the foot, just under the space between your big toe and your second toe. That's where the finger sits. I'm breathing here. Inhale, we're coming up. And if you want, you can either do the same one again, keep hold of your finger, of your feet, or you could see if you can maybe interlace your fingers behind your feet. Inhale, we're opening our chest and exhale, we're pulling us down. Flat back. And we're breathing here for another five, maybe Ujjayi. Okay, inhale, we're looking up. Exhale, we're releasing our feet. Um, if you want, you can stay here until we get into the next pose. Or we're going to do a vinyasa. I think I've called it the yoga burpee before. <laughs> uh -huh. So for that, we're going to bring our feet in. We're placing our hands under our shoulders. We're stepping into our plank. Inhale, and then coming down, exhale. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, pushing back. And then we're coming to seated again. Just to keep our body warm, our heart rate up, keep us strong. Um, but you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Coming back to straight legs, and we're coming into this is the counter pose. It's what I love about Ashtanga, that every pose that follows is sort of based on what we've already done. So we're keeping the body nice and um, it, sort of the movements are really well um, thought through. <laughs> yes. um, and this is reverse plank. If you find, I'll show you two options. If you don't want to do reverse plank, so this would be your feet, your legs are straight, feet are pointing forward, hands are about oh, no, two inches behind you, 15-ish centimeters behind you, and you're pressing into your hands trying to bring the soles of your feet to the ground and coming into this reverse plank. It's a really good shoulder opener. If you find this too much or you don't want to do it, you can bring your feet in, so your knees are bent, and then you press into reverse tabletop. Or if you don't want to do that, you could, I guess, just have your knees at the floor, just push into your hands, pushing your shoulder blades, pulling your shoulder blades together, opening your chest here. We're just sort of, we're, we just had that forward movement and now we're doing a backward movement. Okay, so choose whichever we want you're going to do. We're going to do three breaths. They're quite tough poses. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, we're pushing to whatever option we're doing. We're looking, maybe letting out, if it's okay with our neck, letting it drop into the back. Same for two more breaths. Hips high. Inhale and exhale, we're coming out. Tough pose. But I quite like the shoulder opening in it too. If you want another vinyasa, you definitely absolutely don't have to do this.
Great. Now we're going to do um, the balance that we've just done. We're going to do the seated version of this. So for that, we're going to bring our right leg into us, we're going to drop it to the side. And now we're going to see if we can bring the foot into half lotus. If you didn't do half lotus earlier, then you can just leave it there for the um, seated version of tree pose, which is John Shasana. We'll do John Shasana in a moment all together. But if you don't wanna, if you can't do half lotus or if you don't want to do half lotus, this is a fantastic option. And here we're doing the same thing again. So we're going to bring the right arm, the right foot in the left hand. We're going to bring the right arm around and we're going to see if we can hold the See it. See if you can hold the arm. You could also actually get your belt, put the belt around your foot here, and hold the belt in that right hand. Yeah, let's do that. If you have a belt, let's definitely do that. It's much diff more difficult when you're in standing, but obviously seating, you don't have to worry about balancing. So you can try to do that. Don't hurt yourself. It's obviously tough on your hips and on your knees. And if you want, try to fold forward. Maybe hold your calf, your ankle, or your foot. And again, here it would be fingers on the sole of the foot, thumb under the space between the big toe and the second toe. And hold here. Lovely. This is why props are so amazing. I suppose it's, it's difficult to hold your foot in the, the hand by going around your back. It's really it's, it's obviously like we're turning ourselves into a pretzel, but by using this belt, we're extending our arm and really making this so much more achievable and more comfortable. And yeah, it's, never think that props are not for you or that's not doing the right pose. It's absolutely fantastic. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. We're coming up. We're letting go of the foot releasing our belt, if we're using it, we're stretching out the right leg. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So left foot, the left leg in, bending it, dropping it to the side. You can stay here in Janashashasana, or you can bring the left foot into half lotus. So it's on the right thigh. You can hold it here, or you can try to bring, using your belt, bringing the belt around the foot and holding it in the left hand. And again, holding here, and maybe you can sort of, if you see, oh, I think that's a bit more room, you can help with the other hand to walk your right hand, uh, left hand closer to the foot along the belt. Um, we're going to either hold our calf or our ankle, or maybe the foot with the thumb on the back of the foot. And we're staying here. Breathing here. Inhale, we're looking up. Exhale, we're letting go of the foot, releasing our prop if we're using, putting that to the side. Okay, another vinyasa if you want to join me. Hands under our shoulders, stepping back into plank. Inhale, exhale, we're coming down. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, we're pushing to down dog. And we're sitting down. And you can obviously do a vinyasa also with knees, chest, chin, and cobra. Now we're doing Jan Shashasana, the pose that we've just done as an option. We're all doing it together now. So legs out in front of us, right foot coming in, ideally as high as you can get it into your groin. That can be anywhere on the thigh, really. It could also be against the calf. Getting towards the end of our practice, and a few more poses. Getting our belt, if you want to use it, putting that around the front foot. Inhale. And exhale, holding that belt in both hands, or holding the calf, the ankle, the foot. Breathing here, we're staying for five, so maybe try another set of Ujjayi breaths. Yeah. 
Inhale, we're coming up. Exhale, we're letting go. We're doing the same thing on the left side. If you want, using the belt and the arm the foot. Holding up both hands. Inhale, drop back and exhale. We're folding down. Maybe walking your hands closer to our foot along the belt. If you don't want to use the belt, don't the calf, the ankle, or the foot. Another five breaths, another chance to do Ujjayi breath. Inhale, we're looking up. Exhale, we're letting go. All right. Um, we're doing another vinyasa if you want. Slipping back. Inhale, plank. Exhale, we're coming down this chest chain or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, we're pushing back. And we're coming to sit it. And from here, we're going to do three one, rounds instead of five of Navasana, boat pose. Navasana is great. We're working our core and it's also great strength in our hams, uh, in our hip flexors. That's it. <laughs> also works our back. I give you a couple of options. So we can either just sit here. You can rest your toes on the ground and hold behind your knees. You can hold behind your legs when you stretch them straight. You can let go wherever you are. So let's decide which version you want to do. You can obviously try around. You can do different versions of this depending on how strong your legs feel. Okay, we're rocking back. Let's do the first lot and we're staying for three breaths and try to do your Ujjayi breath here as well. Victorious breath. Let's make us strong through our breathing. And coming down, we're crossing our feet over a little cross-legged and lifting our bum off Ground hands either side of our bum and coming back out. Again, three breaths here with Ujjayi if you want. Okay, coming out, crossing over, maybe the other way, hands either side of our bum, lifting us up. That little lift up is sort of equally releasing the tension in our hip flexors and our core, but also by lifting up, we're really working our core as well. And one more here. Three breaths. Uh, we're coming out. One more little lift. Okay, one more from that side if you want to do it. Stepping back, plank, inhale, exhale, coming down. Inhale, cobra, upward facing dog. Exhale, rolling back. And we're coming to seat it. And we're going to move to the our little part of this finishing sequence. We're coming onto our backs and we're coming. On our back, we're moving into um, bridge pose, set to Vandasana. Um, here, if you don't want to do the active version, you could use your block, lift your bum off the ground, place a book, not your block or your book, um, and just rest here, have a passive version of it, which is wonderful. It's really nice. It's great. If you want to do the active version, we're going to do three times. Um, Bridge. So we're going to, our feet are on the floor, knees are bent, feet as close to our bum as we can get them. Maybe we can even touch them with our fingers, no worries if not. Hands are either side of our body, palms are into the mat. Staying here for one breath. Our knees and feet are hip width apart. And as you come up into your bridge in a moment, try to not have your knees fall out and your legs to open. Try to keep your legs parallel, so engaging your legs. Inhale, exhale. With the next inhale, we're engaging our core, we're tucking our pelvis, we're rolling up gently through our body. And the first one, we're keeping our hands, our arms on the ground. 
pushing into your feet here. By pushing into your feet, you might be able to get your bum a bit further away from the ground. Your hips are towards the ceiling, but your chest is also towards your chin. Breathing here for three. Maybe we'll dry breath. And try to keep your knees point forward, not have them fall out. And inhale, exhale, rolling down gently, first upper back, middle back, lower back. If you want, you can hug your knees in for one moment. Moving down. If you um, notice that your knees are falling apart quite a bit and you're finding it difficult to um, keep them pointing forward, you could place a yoga block between your legs. It's difficult with a book because books are quite heavy. Um, but if you have, I don't know, like a shoe box would work really well as well. If you could place a shoe box between your feet and uh, knees, and by pushing against that shoe box or your yoga block, you're engaging your legs and you're making, um, as soon as you sort of your legs are keep, start falling apart a little bit, the block or the box or whatever will slide down in between your legs. And that would be a great um, um, signal that you need to point your knees forward, that you need to engage your legs more. Okay, feet as close to our bum again as we can. Hip width apart, hands either side by the body. Inhale, exhale here. And inhale, tucking the pelvis, we're rolling up pushing into our feet. And here, if you want, you could try to hold your hands under our, your back, interlacing them, maybe coming onto it. So you sort of bring one hand in between your shoulders and then the other, maybe you can come onto your shoulders a little bit and pushing into the feet, rounding the back. Inhale, exhale. Breathing here for another two. Inhale, if you're holding your hands, release. And exhale, gently, gently roll down. Maybe giving your knees another hug. And one more time, and here, if you have your block or your roll-up blanket or your book, let's all come into a very brief supported bridge. So we're going to inhale our bum off the ground. We're sliding that book, that block, whatever, and our lower back. And we're just going to lie here three breaths and that's really restorative lovely pose breathing here let the hands on your belly maybe take a break from the jai breath for a moment just breathing really slowly okay inhale we're lifting our bum exhale we're pushing the block or book to the side. Let's bring our hands behind our knees and rock up to seated. If you want, you can do one final vinyasa. <laughs> we're going to bring our hands under our shoulders, we're stepping back. Inhale, exhale, we're coming down, knees, chest, chin, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, or upward dog. Exhale, down dog. And we're stepping our feet in. Time. Yeah, okay. Bring this to an end now. We're going to leave shoulders down for today. Thanks, Dara. And um, we're going to sit. Um, if you want, you can sit in half lotus. You can sit just in an easy cross-legged. Or if you have it in your practice, you could also try to come into full lotus. So full lotus, the right leg is at the bottom, and then we're placing the left leg on top. I can't do that without using my, some people can, when they're in half lotus, then lift the other foot on top. With some incredibly open hips. I unfortunately don't, but that's all right. We're working on ourselves. We're staying here, wherever we are, in our little cross-legged version. We're going to bring our arms behind our backs, and we're just holding, either opposite elbows, if that's a bit too tight, you can just use your hands. You can also just hold um, your fingers. And if you don't want to do that at all, you can just have your arms either side, but we're going to do a little forward fold here, either holding our arms or having our hands 
on the floor, my arms on the floor. And maybe bringing your forehead to touch the ground. Don't have to at all, it could just float. And if it's floating over the ground, you could even use a block and rest your head on that. That's very, very supportive and nice. We don't have to. Inhale, coming up. We've done five breaths here. Now we're going to come into a seated pose and come into our uh, fingers are going to go into the arm mudra. That means that our, uh, the fingertips of our thumb and our index finger are touching very gently. It's a symbol for wisdom. Hands are going, the back of the hands are going on our knees. We're sitting here with closed eyes for five breaths as well. Maybe you dry breath if you want. Okay, opening our eyes. And now we're going up, going to try, I actually don't know what the English word for that is, but the pose is Apu Tihi. I think it's such a cute name. It's a pretty strong pose and it's also easier, oddly, in if you can do full lotus because we're going to try and balance, hand, arm balance, our hands are on the floor. And we're going to try and lift our bum off the mat, maybe if I show you from the side. If you can't do half lotus, which is totally a full lotus, that's totally fine. You can do half lotus, you could do um just cross-legged we bring our hands either side and we're just going to try and lift our bum off the floor your feet can totally stay on the ground but we're going to lift our bum and we're staying here for five four three two and one i'm coming down <laughs> i quite i think that's I don't know, it makes me smile that pause whenever I do it. <laughs> okay, um, we're coming into a well deserved Shavasana. For Shavasana, lying back gently, gently coming into a reclining pose, lying on our back, feet are hip to mat width apart, whatever feels good. Arms are beside your body, palms facing up. Shoulder blades may be a little bit together, so we're opening our chest here. Now we can let go of Ujjayi breath, of any focus on your breathing. Just breathe naturally. Try to breathe in and out through your nose still. Maybe inhale, but even my exhale through the mouth with a sigh, just that one sigh. Just let go of any last tension in the body. Feeling her body is hopefully really nice and soft now after that yoga practice. Scan through your body, but I mean, start at the top of your body, start at the crown of your head. So sort of go through, moving down slowly, noticing how you feel. Is there any tension left as you go through? Try to release that tension. Moving through your forehead, making sure it's nice and nice and flat, nice, no wrinkles, no tension. Your eyes as well. We're not squeezing the eyes together. The eyelids are just gently touching. Coming around your nose, just relax. The jaw, just relax. We're not biting our teeth together. Maybe there's a little bit of space between your teeth, even tongue just lying in the mouth. Your neck, your throat, is that tense, just letting go. Your shoulders, 
here if you're sort of tensing them lifting yourself off the ground and if you are then letting go melting into the floor chest back abdomen hips and glutes and bum the entire body is always moving with the breath but just feel how your torso gently gently swaying with every inhale and exhale Now your hips are hopefully a little open, a little soft, falling open the feet, thighs, knees are soft and warm, calves pressing into the ground, feet relaxed. Now we're just staying here for a few breaths, a few moments in stillness. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh. Slowly, arrive right back in this moment, arrive right back on your mat. There's a movement back into your body with your toes, your fingers. Your wrists and your ankles. Inhale, reaching our arms up above us, bring our feet together, coming to a full body stretch. And exhale, letting go. We're hugging our knees into our chest, and we're rocking from side to side. And we're rolling on to our right side, fetal position. Head on the right upper arm, and we're pressing into the left hand in front of our chest, and we're gently coming up to seated. 
All right, that was our class today. I hope you enjoyed the little focus on that breathing practice whilst we're moving through our yoga um, asana practice, our physical yoga practice. Um, it's a difficult one. It's difficult to um, get used to that way of breathing. Um, and it's okay if you didn't like it this time, maybe you'll like it in a couple of months time. It's okay if you forget to do it sometimes in within the practice and then you get back to it. That's all is, all is totally normal and totally great. Um, let's do one nice circle, inhaling our arms up. Exhale, pulling our hands down. We bring our thumbs to the space between our eyebrows, third eye for clear and kind thoughts. Thumbs to our throat for clear and kind words. Thumbs to our heart for clear and kind feelings. And if you want to bow with gratitude to the practice of yoga and gratitude to ourselves for moving today. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you.